Okay, so we're going to look at some really simple debugging methods in PowerShell using the write debug commandlet. And this adds a lot of debugging value to your scripts, which will help you and will help other people. One liners in PowerShell are really easy to troubleshoot. You can just look at it and see what went wrong in your code. You've got an error message, there's not a whole lot going on. You can fix it, boom, bam, fix it, and you're done. Um, but when your code becomes hundreds and hundreds of lines, you need a much more methodical sort of way to figure out what went wrong at certain points and important junctures. And that's where the idea of debugging comes into play. Now PowerShell ISC has a built-in debugger where you can set up breakpoints and do all kinds of fancy uh, style debugging but you can't always rely on that. The server editions of Windows do not come with the ISC pre-installed and now you have the core editions of Windows where you don't even have a GUI. So you need a way to troubleshoot your scripts from the command line. Uh, you can do that a little bit using write host and having those important junctures of your scripts outputted to the screen and they'll let you know what values are existing at certain points. So let's say um, a part of your script relies uh, entirely on the existence of a registry value. And you want to make sure that that registry value exists in your script when it's running. You can include a write host somewhere in there and you could say registry value after you've pulled it into a variable. But you don't want to have write hosts filling up your console window all the time. You want to have a, a clean script that displays relevant information and not all these background processes that are happening. And so you can use write debug to essentially become a switch where you can turn on the ability to write out all sorts of things that are happening in the background without actually having to go and comment out sections of your script or not. So um, this is really important because when you're writing your scripts, you're not always going to um, have the same sort of environment. So registry keys may exist in Windows XP that aren't in Windows 7 and vice versa. And then you're dealing with server additions. So when you write a script, you want to be able to easily figure out where something went wrong. And by including write debug uh, commandlet code into your scripts at important junctures then you can figure out where something went wrong so let's look at this script that I wrote up here that isn't very useful but it will illustrate uh, what happens when we use write debug now I have a couple of Chrome windows open I was looking up write debug I was checking out my videos uh, checking out ss64.com content and so now I'm gonna kill these processes so let's go ahead and just run this code and see what happens I have my right debugs here and you'll notice that it it outputted all this debug information and uh, my my windows are still here it did not shut down my windows the code was supposed to pass all those Chrome when uh, processes to stop process and it should have stopped. Well, now we can use this debug information to see what happened in the debug. Now you'll see that the script just went um, all the way through without stopping anywhere. If you want it to stop at certain debug junctures, you can change the debug preference using the variable debug preference. Now the reason that these were displayed was because I changed it. If I run it now you'll see that it's continued. If you try to do this on your computer you'll probably notice that that it's set to silently continue. So if I run it again no information gets displayed and that's how you can change whether or not this information is displayed on your machine. So now it's set to silently continue and it's just for the session. If you want it to um, stay in your script, you can put this at the top of your script and change it to continue. 
There's some other ones that you can change it to. You can change it to stop. So if I run it like this, you'll notice that it stops at the first bit of uh, write debug. So it gets there and then it stops and then you can see the value and, and it exits out of the script. There's also another one that's pretty handy called inquire. So let's go ahead and run that. And inquire will ask you questions at every bit of write debug that it encounters. So it asks me, would I like to continue with this script? And it displays that debug information. So I'll go ahead and say yes. And then it goes to the next one. And I'll say yes. And then I'll just say yes to all. Um, now, there's still 13 Chrome processes. But we can see here in the middle that the number of Chrome processes is not displayed. So immediately we know that something has gone wrong at uh, above this point in our script. And we know that it is correct in this part of our script because uh, this is indeed the number of processes that are running or we, at least we're getting a value so we know that something worked right. So let's go ahead and find out what happened between here and between here. And immediately, because I put it there, we can find out that the variable was misspelled and so that these processes that were contained in this variable did not get passed to um, this Chrome process variable which is filtered using the where object and so this Chrome process did not contain anything. Now when we create this variable that's going to contain only Chrome processes we can pass it to stop process and it will stop all the Chrome processes. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we run our correct script now. And I'm just going to go ahead and say yes to all, yes to all, yes to all. And I don't know why that didn't work, but either way, the number of Chrome processes was 13 before we sent it to stop processes. And after we see that there was four which isn't very good because if our if the next bit of code that we had relied on all those processes being gone then some other error could have occurred so this is where other debugging value comes in is not only with um, seeing what values are there but also being able to see what happens in in the sense of timing in our scripts so I did not allow stop process to have enough time to close all those Chrome processes before I captured this bit of get process information. So that tells me that I need to slow things down. So let's go ahead and include a start sleep and put one second in there. And I'm going to go ahead and open back up the Chrome windows. And we'll come back up here and let's tell it to continue or continue this time and run it and as you can see we waited one second and now when we reevaluated the number of Chrome processes running on the machine there are zero so this is how we can use write debug to um, figure out important junctures in our scripts and to get that information and when we're done debugging we can go ahead and change our, our session back to silently continue just open open again you can see that it was shut down because it said um, that it needed to be restored and if we run our, our code just normally we have troubleshot all the problems with our script. We know that our script is running because we've had those junctures of verification included in them. And if we take this to another environment, um, we can test it as well. Maybe it's an even, even slower machine. Maybe we need to increase the start sleep. Obviously, there's better ways of verifying that and doing that. But it gives you an example of um, how, how you can use write debug to figure out different problems in uh, very specific sort of situations and then um, taking this code and moving it from machine to machine you have a uniform way of being able to debug without using the ISE. 
So that adds a lot of debug value to your scripts and um, there's a lot more to debugging in PowerShell than this. This is just a very simplistic view of, of how to add a lot of value even with just these three lines of code here, um, especially if your scripts are hundreds and hundreds of lines. So that is the um, write debug commandlet. Thanks for watching.